Hi, good morning everyone. Yeah, very good morning. So shall we begin the session? Yeah, there is a new session. Yeah, there is a new chapter that is chapter number six, information, information system security. Okay, so wait for others. All right. Not more than five minutes. Okay. Now let, let's start with the chapter number six that is information system security. What are the various security concepts that we use in the information system? Uh, now in the last class we have finished with the chapter number five that is what are the various information security concepts that is used in the databases. Yes, that's right. And now chapter number six is the information system security that is how the system is secure or what are the various security credentials that we use for the security what are the various credentials that we use in the security. So first part is uh, learning objective. Now what are the learning objective for this one? First one is identify the information security trade. That means what is the information security trade? How the information security be built or how we will be used using the information security. Then identify and understand the high level concepts surrounding information security too. So first is what is information security? Why we are using? That is the main part. Then next one is identify and understand the high level concepts surrounding information security. That is how we are using the information security or what are the various concepts that we use or what are the various security tools that we use for the information security. Then uh, secure yourself digitally. Whatever the digital system, whatever the digital criteria that is available, we can surround the things, we can surround the tools so that is securing yourself digitally. That means how we are going to use the security tools or how we are going to use the security measures. So first one is identify the information security trade, then understand the high level concepts, then secure yourself digitally. So let's start with the introduction to this one. What is the security? Why we are using the security? So as computer and the other digital devices are nowadays becoming essential for the business or the commerce because nowadays we cannot live without the digital devices. So they are essential to for the business as well as the commerce. And they have also increasing become or became a target for the attacks. Now make mostly of the targets or mostly of the attacks are the online attacks. They become a target for the attacks and in order for a company or an individual to use a computing device with a confidence they must first be assured that the device is not compromised in any way. That the device is not compromised in any way and that all the communication will be secure. The device is not compromised and every communication will be secure. In this chapter we will study about the fundamental concepts of the information system security and discuss some of the measures that can be taken to mitigate security threat. That means what are the various security threats that is available that can be taken to my mitigate the security threats. Now we will begin with an overview of or focusing on how organization will handle or how organization can stay secure. Several different measures that a company can take to improve security will be discussed. Now we will then follow up by reviewing the security precautions that individual can take in order to secure the personal commuting or computing environment. That means how, how the system will be secure, how we can secure the system in a computing environment, what are the various ways by which we can secure the personal computing terms. So this is the security. So that means introduction is how we are going to study about the security, how the security will enable and what is the advantage of security, why we are going to use the security, how the system will be secure, why it is beneficial, everything that is available with the security. There are so many security threats that means security attacks that is available. So we have to mitigate that, or we have to um, slow down that security threats. The next one is the security th uh, the information security trade. There are three concepts that is known as a CIA. If you understand the CIA, everything is understandable by the security. But these three terms are used for the security. That is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. I'm repeating again. Again, C means confidentiality. I means integrity. I means availability. Now, let's talk about the what is the confidentiality. Can uh, Mitty Bench mean you are online? Can can you um, assume or can you judge, can you try what is the confidentiality and how it becomes a part of the security. Are you able to hear me, Mitty Bench me?
हेलो या हेलो यस हमें तो ये चीज या कैन कैन यू टेल मी व्हाट इज कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी इट वो आई कुड सी द एबिलिटी टू वर्क प्राइवेटली सो दैट नो वन एल्स टू व्यू और सी व्हाटएवर इंफॉर्मेशन दैट यू आर वर्किंग ऑन सो हाउ इट इज बेनिफिशियल फॉर द सिक्योरिटी so how, again? how how it is beneficial for the security why we are using the terms confidentiality in the security well for one thing uh, you cannot say you have security if there is no confidentiality you have to be able to provide confidentiality for so people that, to that means know that they these, actually have that means these two terms are interchangeable right yes something like that yes. okay all right thank you so the next one uh, so first one is the confidentiality that means how your information is confident that means how your information will be able to restrict the access for example if i am going to restrict my computer uh, providing the passwords so when protecting the information you be, we want to able to restrict the access to those who are allowed to see it everything else should be disallowed from learning anything about its content And nothing is available everything is confidential so there is no leakage of the information so that becomes a security and this is very essential of the confidentiality that if, if i want that the uh, my system is secure so first point first first target is the confidentiality how how we are going to access this confidentiality and how we are maintaining the confidentiality for example federal law requires that universities restrict access to the private student information the university must be ensure that only those who are authorized have access to view the grade record that means no else that means no outsider will will be allowed only the authorized person have access to view the grade records right now next part c is over next part is integrity how we are going to integrate that has not been altered that has not been uh, we can say the modified so integrity is assurance that the information being access has not altered and truly really represents what is intended that means there is no changes there is no modification there is no alteration in the information so it is assurance that the information being access has not been altered and truly really represents what is intended that means what is going to trying out what is going to do out or what is trying to reveal out everything is as it is there is no modification no alteration nothing just as a person with the integrity means what he or she says and can be trusted to the represent the truth information integrity means how information will be secure or how information will be presented in a better way <coughs> in a precise way that cannot be altered but sometimes information can also be leaked out so that in that case that that information or that integrity will be lost out through the malicious intent such as when someone who is not authorized make a change to intentionally re misrepresent something an example of this would be when a hacker is hired to go to the university system and change a grade this is one of the example that when a hacker is hired to go to the university system and change a grade because hacker hack the data hacker can change the password hacker can access a part password hack the part that's why their name is hackers so they can go to the university system they can track out the university system and they can also change the grade and integrity can also be lost unintentionally such as when a computer power search corrupts a file or someone authorized to make a change or deletes a file or enter the incorrect information yeah um, there are some cases when the power has gone and uh, after the power has come our document will be opened there is option like open the document that has not been saved so in that case anyone can access that system if there is no password is there available data is available in the c drive or the d drive that can corrupt a file or someone or tries to make a change accidentally that deletes a file or enter the incorrect information that is the integrity so in simple terms it is assurance that the information being accessed that has not been altered and truly really represent what is intended what is going to do so we have done with the c we have done with the i next one is availability 
as an email advice availability that is how the information will be available to the third party or how the information will be available so information availability is a third part of the CIA trade that is a third part of the CIA and this means that the information can be accessed and modified by anyone or tries to do so in an appropriate time frame that means anyone uh, no one can um, use if they uh, that do not have a authorized permission or they do not have a authorized way the information can be accessed and modified by anyone authorized to do so in an appropriate time frame depending on the type of the information what is required appropriate time frame can means different things so if it is a very very small information about the student details that means less time frame and if there is a huge organization data that means a large or the more time frame for example a stock trader needs information to be available immediately while a salesperson may be happy to get sales number for a day for the day in a report in the next morning yeah stock trader that is available that needs the data that needs information that is available immediately whatever the information that is used they can access the information they can access the uh, part immediately and why is a sales person why is a sales person may be happy to get the sales number for the day in a report in the next morning that means he or she have to wait for the next morning have to report for the next one Companies such as Amazon.com will require their servers to be available 24 hours a day, 7 days in a week. That means they cannot suffer if their web servers are down for a few minutes once in a while. That means everything is available online. Yeah, this is this is a part of the availability. This is a part of the CIA trade, and this is also the security enables. So this is also next part that is uh, this is the third part that is availability that means the information is accessed and modified by anyone that is authorized to do so in an appropriate manner not the unauthorized manner so C that is a confidentiality then I integrity and next one is the availability Now come to the next part that is a uh, tools for information security. Now Mitty Benjamin any doubts in the CIA? okay so next one is what are the various tools for the information security how the information security will be gathered so in order to ensure the confidentiality integrity and availability of the information organization can choose from a variety of tools variety of tools means that there are multiple tools that will be available for the information security and each of these tools can be utilized as a part of an overall information security policy <coughs> And that means these are the tools that that enable the information security in the organization in the system now let's see what are the various tools that is available and there are two uh, tools that is very important one is authentication one is the authorization this is the most common way to identify someone is through their physical appearance but how do we identify someone that sitting behind a computer screen at a time or at the ATM that is how from the back we represent that who is sitting over here who is sitting on the computer screen now tools for authentication you are used to ensure that person accessing the information is indeed who they represent themselves to be that means whatever the information that is available so that tools that authentication tools are used to ensure that the person who is assessing the availability that will be used that will be available for data that is used to ensure that the person that access the information is the correct person or not authorized person or not 
So the negation can be accomplished by identifying someone through one or more three factors. Now let's see what are the three factors that is used with the authentication. First one is something they know, something they have, or something they are. Now, something they know means something they know. They, what is the data? How it is used? They have means what is their criteria or something they are. For example, the most common form of authentication today is the user ID and the password. In this case. The authentication is done by confirming something that the user knows, the ID and the password, but this form of authentication is easy to compromise. And stronger form of authentication are sometimes indeed. And we are going to when we are going to identify someone only by something that they have, such as a key or the card can also be a problematic. And when that identified token is lost or stolen, that identity can be stolen. That means if I have a username and the ID, if I forgot my username or user ID, how 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 we can get get that password? No. So username means a unique number, unique unique ID will be allotted to you. That only provides the information to you. And password must maybe changed from time to time. If you forgot the password, that is also okay. You have option to forgot password. But if you have uh, forgot your user ID, that is very difficult to capture that. The final factor, something you have, is much harder to compromise. The, this factor identifies the user through the use of the physical characteristics such as the eye scan or the that is the eye retina or the fingerprints. Identify someone through their physical characteristics is known as a biometric. So whenever I want to identify someone through their physical characteristics, that is known as a biometric. And the more secure way to authenticate the user is to do multi-factor authentication. And by combining two or more of the factors listed above, it becomes much more difficult for someone to misrepresent themselves. That means whatever the data that is available, they must be represented or they must be misrepresented with the communication. And one of the example of this would be the use of a RSA secure ID token. And this device is some time that you have and will generate a new access code every 60 seconds. And to log on into the information resource using the RSA device, you combine something you know. And a four digit pin with the code that is available with the device. And the only way to properly authenticate is by knowing the code and having the RSA device. That is how we are going to use the RSA device. That is also authentication part. Now, next one is the access control, how, how we are going to use the access control. So once a user has been authorized, so when, once, once I say that I am authorized users, the next step is to ensure that only access the information resources that are appropriate. That, that can only access the information that are appropriate, they, they are not involving or they are not indulging in the extra information that is available within the database. But they are restricted to only that information that is required for the organization. This is run through the use of the access control that determines which users are authorized to read, modify, add or delete the information. So not every user can get the access to read, modify, add or delete the information. But some users who are authorized users to read, uh, they have an opportunity to read, modify, add or delete the information. And several different access control mechanisms also model also exist. One is the ACL that is the access control list and one is the role based access control or access control that is a RBS and for each of the information resource that an organization wishes to manage a list of the users that have ability to take specific action would be created so there is a specific action that should be created over here that is known as access control list or the ACL 
and for each and every user specific capabilities are assigned that means read write delete or add and three of them are the most important that is the read write ex <coughs> execute that is rwx and only users with those capabilities are allowed to perform these functions if a user is not on the list they have no ability to know even know that the information resource exists or not acls are very simple to understand and maintain however they have a several drawbacks that is access control list the primary drawback is that the each information resource is managed separately so if a security admin wanted to add or remove a user that have a large set of information resources it would be quite difficult and as the number of the users and resources increases ACL become harder to maintain this has led to the improved method of the access control known as a role based control access control that is RPAC so instead of giving the specific users access right to the information resource user are assigned to the role that is what is the role that will be available what is the, what is the category that will be used for the information control that will be accessed or that will be used in a, in a specified manner so with the RBC or RBAC, instead of giving the specific users right, we are assigned to the roles. Then these roles are assigned to the access. So instead of assigning that um, directly with the uh, access right, we are assigning the role that will be indirectly going to the access. This allows the admin administrator to manage the users and roles separately. That simplifies the admin part and by extension improves the security. So that will be used to manage the users and the roles in a separate manner that also simplifies the admin and also by extension also improves the security. For example, this is the access control. Uh, there's the J Smith that have a read option, really, that have a read option, King in that have a read, write, add, delete, both options. Robert have only two options between the right in the same way. Mendelssohn has also had two options. This is going into the role based access control. A reader have a read options. A reader have a reader in the write option. Admin have a each and every option. Now role assigns. J Smith becomes reader because he, he have only a read option. Now R L become a reader because he have only or he or she have only the read options. Then Queen Queen have both the option that becomes admin because every option is available with the admin. In the same way, last two that is the Mrobolt and the Mendelssohn, they have a option for the writing, so they have a editor. So editor have an option for the read and the write. There's no one that have an option of the read, write, and add. No, that is only provided by the admin that have all the options. All the options means read, write, add, and delete. So this is a diagram that explains how, how to use the access control, what are the various benefits of the access control and how we are going to yeah how, how we are going to develop the access controls. So first one is access control list, then role based access control, then role assignments. <coughs> so Jess Smith, really Quinguin, Robiles, Mandelson, Reader, Editor, Admin. Now next one is the next part is the encryption. So we have finished with the authentication. We have finished with the access control. Next tool for the information security is the encryption. Now let's see what is an encryption. So many times or many a times an organization needs to transmit the information over the internet. So in most of the times, many organizations or an organization needs to transmit the information over the internet or transfer it on an external media such as the CD or the flash drive. In these cases, even with the proper authentication and the access control, it is possible for an authorized person to get access to the data. Now, what is an encryption? It is a method of encoding data upon its transmission or the storage that so that only authorized individual can read it. So what is encryption? That means changing from the normal text to the unreadable form. That unreadable form will be only carried out, will be only used by the uh, only 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 get it by the authorized persons, authorized individual who can only read it. So it is a conversion from the plain text to the cipher text. Now there are two terms. One is a plain text, one is a cipher text. Plain text is a normal text that anyone can understand. And ciphertext is the text that only 
understand by the authorized users. So if, if the data is converted or the text is converted into the cipher text or the unreadable form, so how, how, how the hackers will use that data? Hackers can hack their data, that I agree, but they are not able to use that data because they are not going to understand what is written in the, uh, what is the content that is available because they are in the encoding form, they are in the coding form, we can say. So this is one of the fruitful methods that is known as encryption that converts the plain text into the cipher text. Plain text means the normal text and cipher text is the encrypted form. So encryption is the process of encoding the data upon its transmission or the storage so that only authorized users can read it. This encoding is accomplished by a computer program which encodes the plain text that is transmitted. The same line that is available so that is going to convert the plain text into the cipher text. Now, it's the duty of the receiver to convert that <laughs> cipher text into the plain text so that the receiver represent receive the type of cipher text and decodes it. So first of all it is encoding that is converted into the cipher text then next one is a decoding that converts the cipher text into the plain text that is known as a decryption. So one is encryption, one is a description and a decryption. Encryption is done at the sender's end and the decryption is done at the receiver's end. And in order to for this to work the sender and receiver needs to agree on the method of encoding so that the, both the parties can communicate properly. Both the parties can also share the encryption key, enabling them to encode and decode each other messages. This is known as the symmetric key encryption. So there are two parts of encryption. One is a symmetric key encryption. One is a uh, asymmetric key encryption. Symmetric key encryption means both the user, that means both the sender and the receiver have a same key that is used. So they have a same key. So if the user wants to get the data, they have a key. If the receiver has to want to data, they have a key. So this type of encryption is a problematic because the key is available in the two different places. An alternative to a symmetric key encryption is a public key encryption. And these two keys are used. One is a public key, one is a private key. And whenever I want to send an encrypted message to obtain the public key, encode the message and send it to the receiver. So there are two keys, one is a public key, one is a private key. And to send an encrypted message, you obtain the public key, encode the message, send it and the receiver then use the private key to decode it. So public key is used for the sending out and the private key is used for the receiving out because we can use any 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 key that is a public key for the for the converting into the encoding. But when the, it is received by the receiver and they convert into the normal form that is doing the decryption that is done by the private key. Now, public key can be given to anyone who wishes to receive the message. Each user only uh, or each user simply needs one private key and one public key. And the private key is necessary in order to decrypt something, event or some, something that is sent with the public key. So whatever the public key data, whatever the public key information that is available, that is sent out, that is used in order to decrypt the something that is used with the public key. Now this is a public key encryption example. This is a sender, four score and seven years age ago, four, one father bought this one, this one, this one. This is a plain text for the public text. This is converted into the communication uh, cipher text. This is not understandable by anyone. And receiver again uses the private key to decrypt it. So one is a sender that uses the encryption that, that, that converts the data. One is a communication channel. That is the way by which it is going. That is converted into the cipher text. And at last it is received by the receiver that is getting the plain text by the private key. Now next is a sidebar that is a password security. Now what are the various key terms that is used or how the password will be secure? 
But what are the various criteria for setting the password so that our password will be secure that is not understandable by anyone. So good passwords policies must be put in place in order to ensure that password cannot be compromised. The password cannot be compromised, that means the password cannot be hacked out. And below are the some policies, that means there are some policies that are given for the organization, that is how the how the password will not be break or what is the main practice of the good password, that is the password security. So first one is requires a complex password, that means that cannot be easily hacked by anyone, cannot be judged by anyone. So if anyone can judge, that is not a good password. So make the password that is not easily judged by anyone. So that requires a complex password that includes uh, keys, that includes a method, that includes a ways by which they are communicating. So, for example, that a password must contain the numbers, alphabets, special symbols, everything. It's because anyone can, yeah, anyone can hack the password, so that, that crack the password by testing each and every term. Then next next criteria is change the password on a regular basis. That change the password regularly. So most of the person change their password on a weekly basis, even on a monthly basis. So change the password on a regular basis so, so that no one can hack the data. No one can hack the or access the password because everything is available, everything we are going to use. So um, we have changed the password in one month, in one week. So how how hackers can hack multiple uh, passwords for me only? If I say there are so many users that information will be stolen out. Then train employees not to give away passwords. That means we are not using the admin, we are not using the login, we are not using our name, mobile number, but they are easily capturable by the persons. So first part is a change the password on a regular basis. There is no requirement that you cannot change the password on a regular basis because that is required, very much required for the organizations. Then uh, requires a common password or the or the requires the complex password that is available. So one of the major way to compromise that the, there is a password that is used. So there's a top level domain. There are three passwords that is used in the 2012 is a one two three four five six one two three four five six seven eight. That is uh, name of the company at the rate one two three four. Name of the person like uh, my name is Himanshu. Then H I M N S H U at the rate one two three four. So these are various um, things that we cannot use while setting up the password because hackers can easily crack these passwords because they are used to with this password. But good policy password is that that requires a minimum of the eight characters and at least one uppercase letter and one special character one number. That means eight characters are mandatory and at least one uppercase letter, at least one special character and at least one number. Now, next time is the backups. How we are going to take the backups? This is the last topic for the information security. This is the last option for the tools for information security. That means we are going to take the backup on a regular basis so that if the data is lost, due to n number of reasons so anyone can or a user can uh, access or you can get back the data so another essential tool for the information security is a backup plan for the entire organization not only should the data be corporate level be backed up but all the individual computers that is used in the organization could also be backup or should also be backed up that means not that the whole organization data or the whole institution data will be backed up, but each and everything that may be individual data, that may be organization data, that must be backed up. Now, what are the various terms or what are the various plans that could consist of the various components? First one is a full understanding of the organization information resources, then regular backup of all the data, that means or, or, or regular backup will be maintained for all the data that is available within the organization, for example, 
then offsite storage of the backup data there are two types of uh, two types by which we can get the backup one is online one is offline so online is very good but we have to maintain the data offline because that is very secure that is very approachable so make the data in online mode also as well as offline mode that is offsite then test of the data restoration whether the data is available or whether the, that backup provides a recovery or not so that will be test out this will ensure that the process is working and will the organization confidence in the backup plans and besides this there is also a backup facility that is available like ups is used that is a, yeah uninterrupted power supply or the universal power supply that provides a critical component to the system so that if the, if the power has gone not the computer will not slow out and the data is not lost out alternate or the hot sites that is uh, used an alternative method for the criteria that is also kept in mind and information become a strategic asset that organization whole organization has sprung up around the technology that is necessary for implementing a proper backup strategy that can contact with the service provider to back up all the data or they purchase large amount of online storage space and do it themselves technology such as the storage area network and the archival system are not used by most of the large organization because that is very 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 costly systems so they have to maintain the backups in the pen drives in the data either online backups so they, they they contact with the service provider to back up all the data or they purchase the large amount of online storage that i said and do it on, on themselves like in the pen drive then there's a storage area network that are archival used by the large of the organizations now next topic is firewall that i'm going to start within the next class that is in tomorrow's class now any doubts anyone in the today's class so we are going to finish this class over here only next topic that is tomorrow's topic is the firewall if there is any doubts any confusion you can ask the doubts from me